Hello viewers, welcome to Vector Kernel Tutorials. In this video, I am going to show you on how to configure the diagnostic ISOTP in kernel configuration. Also, we will see in detail about each options inside kernel panel and its purpose. So before we go to the video, please hit the subscribe button to get notification on future series of videos. Okay, let's jump into the video. Let me show you how to open the Kano. So first of all, if you have already installed Vector Kano in your PC, so you go to the start menu and then search for Kano and you will find the application for Vector Kano. Click onto it. I've already opened it. So it will show you in this view. <coughs> so this is the Vector Kano configuration. So it will open firstly with the blank configuration and then you can uh, create a sample configuration with the um, with the channels that you need and then you will find a configuration something similar to this okay at the front end you will see this option like home analysis simulation test diagnostics environment hardware tools and layouts so these are all the different tabs which are available in the vector canoe option um, and in this particular video, we're going to see about the diagnostic tab, especially. And especially into this diagnostic tab, we're going to see how to configure the diagnostic description file into the configuration. And then you can use it for to read and write the data into the EC. Okay, let's go to the diagnostic tab. So first of all, you will see all these options as disabled because once after you configure your diagnostic descriptive file, then all these panels will become active and then you can make use of it. First of all, you have to click onto this diagnostic or ISOTP tab. When you click onto it, you will see this diagnostic or ISOTP configuration being opened. <coughs> okay, and here you will find all the different networks visible to you. And uh, yes, in the left side, you will see all the networks like CAN, LIN, MOST, FlexRay, Ethernet network, and additional diagnostic settings. And in the right side, you will find the configuration options for each categories. So that is on the diagnostic panel wise. Okay, let us first see like how we could add the diagnostic description file which is called the CDD file into the Kanu configuration. First of all, in order to do that, go into the left side of your uh, diagnostic ISOTP configuration and right click onto the network where you wanted to add the .cdd file. In this case, I'm going to add the .cdd file in the CAN network. Uh, first of all, this video is made in such a way that we assume that you already have a .cdd file and you wanted to link it into the Kano configuration. So I'm going to show you how to link it, that's it. And then details about the each options inside this diagnostic configuration. So that's the purpose of this video. So right click onto the CAN and then you will find different options to add the diagnostic description file, uh, which I called it as .cdd file or ODX in your case, if you have it, then you can link that as well. So click onto the add descriptive uh, data, uh, diagnostic description and then you will be prompted to select your .cdd file. So if you already have a .cdd file, please select the respective cdd file which you want to link in the Kanu configuration. So here I have a .cdd file already. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click open. When I click open, then I will see, I will now see four three different options under the diagnostic so i can i'm going to rename it as per our need okay so now um fine okay so you now uh, after you added your dot cdd file you will find three different layers so one is the transport layer the other one is the diagnostic layer and the third one is the additional descriptions so what we are going to see here is we're going to see in detail about each and every uh, options. So first of all, we will look into the diagnostic options. So in the diagnostic option, first of all, you will see um, four different options here uh, under the configure diagnostic description. So remove is the option where you can, if you click onto it, you will uh, remove the diagnostic file, which you already linked to the 
um, to the diagnostic configuration and that is the purpose of the remove and <coughs> okay and duplicate is another option uh, in order to duplicate it copies the diagnostic description and inserts it at the same position in the tree view as a duplication so when i say it is a tree view it is this view so here if i click on the duplicate then it will create one more additional um, description file will be added along with it so uh, the remove option is to remove it so if i click on the remove then it will be removed the reason why you sh you, you have seen it as an intermark is that you uh, it has seen two two files two description files of the same category so it looks like a duplication which cannot be done uh, each each um, uh, cdd file should be unique so that is the uh, whole purpose of it so that's why the tool recognizes it and then it marks it as an into mark to show you that it's a duplication okay now the third option is to generate if you click onto it it will generate the uh, cdd file as a template version and then open is another option where um, if you click on to the open uh, option it will open the dot cdd file in a candela studio uh, application so this candela studio application is, a, is an exclusive application to edit your cdd file or to create your cdd file so if you click on to it it will automatically open the um, candela studio which is which will be something like this and you will be able to edit all the uh, parameters and its properties in the candela studio so that is the purpose of it but um, provided um, if you do not have if you do not purchased this uh, application then obviously it will show it as a read only version um, so whenever if you have installed your vector canoe as a part of it uh, the candela studio will also get installed uh, but it has uh, but it will be installed it as a read version only but if you wanted to edit something you need to pro buy the candela studio um, as a developer or a, um, um, any developer version or a professional version so you need to buy it and then only you can uh, make utilizing the uh, edit options in this cdd file okay so that's all about the first four options and then now we will see about what are the options inside this diagnostic description so you will find the ecu qualifier what is this ecu qualifier so here the ECU qualifier is displayed uh, which will be used by the CANU to refer the current descriptive description. Okay, So it should be unique as I said because uh, it, it's also important to be unique because in particular if you wanted to call this uh, ECU qualifier from your capital program uh, then uh, it's important that you need to have, a, have it as a unique name between uh, if you have a multiple lot CDD file, then obviously you need to have a unique name for it. Otherwise, uh, um, the, 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 the capital program will never know that which particular issue that it has to call. So it's important and especially we will call through the diaxit target functions. So um, it's important this should be always be unique in its name. And uh, the second option, it denotes the file uh, where it shows like from where we have uh, what file that we have already loaded. Uh, and that's displaying over here it's a path and then now we will go into the uh, other available option so the interface so what is this interface option so the interface um, interfaces in the diagnostic description files it defines the uh, communication parameter for accessing an ecu so it's a diagnostic can here so it can uh, through which we could access the ecu parameters or the data uh, and then the variant is another option so um, if a description contains more than one variant for instance if you have a cdd file and it contains more than one variant then uh, in that case you need to specify which particular variant before you start your measurement so that's important and um, the target group the target group uh, it has three different options uh, one is as development manufacturing and services so you need to select the appropriate uh, target group uh, before you start the measurement uh, and then the next is about the diagnostic tester uh, the diagnostic tester it's an important um, uh, feature here so if you uh, if if you see here if i unselect this diagnostic tester you will not find the diagnostic layer at all 
So this diagnostic tester is something like a physical tester. The physical tester in the main, in the sense, it's it's you. Like uh, there is a person who is uh, the, there is a person or a tester who wants to be um, um, in all the sessions in order to uh, read and write the uh, data uh, from uh, to the ECU and from the ECU. For that, uh, we have this option. So you have to enable this option in order to make use of the uh, tester present options. And uh, there are two different uh, options uh, which is present over here. So one is the physical request and then the second is the functional group request. So the physical request is something like it's a typical way of uh, diagnostic communication to an ECU. And the functional group requests, it's something like uh, only the diagnostic console and uh, fault memory windows are available. So sending the functional request to the group itself. So that's what this two option is all about. And uh, I think we have seen all the options inside this diagnostic on the higher level. And now we will see into the next, the three layers that we have seen already. So one of the first is the transport layer, so which we will see. So here you will find uh, the option override manually. So what is this override manually? So it's uh, uh, if the diagnostic description has an interface matching to the network. Okay, so if, if already the diagnostic, uh, the CDD file, which you have linked, if it is by default, it is matching to the network parameters, then you don't need to select this. So if you do not select it, then you, you cannot make use of all these options. So what it will do is the uh, whatever the settings that you have uh, uh, defined in your .cdd file will be automatically taken into the uh, communication uh, for the requests and response purpose. But uh, if it needs to be utilized, I mean, if you wanted to modify something, for example, if you wanted to reuse your .cdd file for multiple different DCUs, then in that case, you might be in need of modifying certain parameters uh, as stated below. Uh, I'll go in detail about each functions, but uh, in order to make use of it or in order to reuse it by modifying certain key parameters, then in that case, you can make use of this option override manually. So if, you, if I click onto this option, what it does is it just overrides your already defined parameters or settings inside your CDD file with these values. So what are these values which we are monit uh, which we are trying to override um, uh, um, in on par with your uh, existing CDD file? It's nothing but the request to the ECU, response from the ECU, functional to the to the ECU, and then we have few of the other protocol parameters. So, so these are all the key parameters which we can uh, modify in order to reuse your existing solid .CDD file. Okay. Uh, let us go one by one inside the addressing. So, okay, in the addressing, we have three options. So, request to the ECU. What is request to ECU? So, here you need to specify the identifier by which you need to send the request to the ECU. Okay, so here you will find an identifier. So, the identifier here 0x7e7 is the identifier by which you could request something to the ECU. For instance, I wanted to read certain DID. For that, I need to make use of this particular identifier in order to read a data from the ECU, okay? And now, response from the ECU. So, response from the ECU, again, it is, it is nothing but here, you need to specify the identifier through which you will need to receive the response from the ECU, okay? So, here, by this identifier, you will be able to read the data means you will get the response from the ECU. The first option is by which you will you will request something to the ECU that is 7E7 and here it's like a 7EF uh, by which you will receive the response from or the answer from the ECU. So that is what uh, it is defined here. So we, we can configure these identifiers and then the third one is the functional to the ECU which is nothing but the tester can sense these to a uh, a group of control units so whereby the target address specifies this group okay and uh, what is this option so here we have a 29 bit identifier and if you wanted to select any of this option it will switch to the extended ids so so that is about the addressing option so now we will go into the next option like additional isotp protocol parameters so here we will see like ST min, block size, FC delay, max length, and also few more parameters. What does this ST min means? So ST min, and we have a, a time, we can specify a time uh, in terms of milliseconds. Okay, this specifies 
the minimum interval between consecutive frames. Uh, when I say as a consecutive frames, uh, it is between the, um, it's an interval between two CAN messages of a transmitter. So it should be within this time limit. So this is the interval that we could vary or, or, or modify, okay. Uh, so that is like 10 milliseconds. If you specify it, it means that the interval is 10 milliseconds. And then the block size. So block size, what is the block size? Why we are giving a block size here? So after so many consecutive frames, the transmitter will await for a, will look for a flow control from the receiver, okay. But if you specify it as zero, it means that we are switching it off. And then uh, FC delay. So FC delay is nothing but the tester will delay the sending of a flow control frame for this many milliseconds. For instance, 10 milliseconds, uh, like it's a delay uh, for sending the flow control frame. And then maximum length. So maximum length is nothing but the transmissions shall be, uh, shall have this much maximum length in bytes. So here we are mentioning it as 4095 uh, bytes. Um, so when a transmission with larger length is received beyond this value, then um, it uh, it is supported with a overflow error. So that is the uh, purpose. So we can configure this value as well. So that is ab all about the options that we have seen it on the uh, transport layer. So now we will go to the diagnostic layer. So in the diagnostic layer, again, you will find uh, something similar to the, to the option that we have seen it in the transport layer. So here also you do see the override manually option. So again, we have uh, some specific um, configuring parameters by which you can uh, you can modify and you can edit and then you can adapt it uh, or otherwise it will take what is defined in the .gdd file. So here also it's, it plays the same role, override manually, okay. Under this override manually, uh, you will also see the other options like tester present. Uh, what is tester present means? So tester present, many ECUs must receive a request in order to remain in the diagnostic session. For instance, you will have certain DIDs uh, which you can read it uh, or access the data from the ECU um, in the default session. Also certain data if you wanted to read, uh, which is prevented, which is secured, uh, for which you need to go into the extended session. But how long you will stay in that extended session uh, will be determined based on this tester present option. So if you enable this tester present, it means that you will stay that long in your extended session. Otherwise, it will quit from the extended session and then it will come back to the default session. So default session is the first session. By default, it will be into that session. So that is what the option of this tester present is about. And then here, uh, for instance, send tester present, there is an option here. So here, if you decide whether the tester presence should be sent cyclically to the ECU at all, uh, so that is the purpose, uh, like if you unselect it, it will do in that way. But if you select it, a tester present only sent after the measurement has been started and once the diagnostic session has been established with the ECU by sending one diagnostic request. So uh, also uh, we can toggle, uh, uh, toggle between tester present uh, as present and absent. So in, in a different windows, uh, let me show you that, um, that you can do it in two different windows. After you loaded this, uh, this CDD file and if you apply it, uh, then you will find all this, uh, um, all these windows will be active. Earlier at the start of, uh, start when we click onto this diagnostic ISOTP, uh, we saw that all these fields were being disabled, but now we have all these things enabled. Because I loaded the .cdd file and in the .cdd file we have the um, have these panels already made. So that's, this is why uh, you will see a diagnostic console, you will see a fault memory and then you will also see a diagnostic session control. Okay, detail, uh, detail information about this diagnostic console and fault memory, we will see it in another different video. But here I will show you firstly about uh, how to enable or enable the uh, tester present so if, if you see, this is where uh, you will find an option to, uh, when you click on it, it will become as a tester present and at the same time, if you do not want it to uh, have it as a tester present, you can also click it again, uh, it will disable. So the same way you can also do it, do this option in the uh, fault memory. Again, you will find this particular option here uh, by which you can enable or disable the tester present. So these are all the two options that we have seen it by which you can enable or disable the tester present. Okay, now coming back again. Uh, on the uh, other 
parameters like S3 client time or S3 server time. So what does this S3 client time means? So S3 client time, uh, it's a time the diagnostic client should wait before sending a test present request. So that is what uh, we call it as S3 uh, client time. So uh, here you can give the time uh, based on the settings, the preferred settings. And then S3 server time. So this is nothing but the timeout in the diagnostic server for leaving a non-default session. Non-default session in the sense, it's not in default. It means that it is in the extended session or in the programming session. So uh, if you specify it as 5 seconds, then uh, 5000 5, milliseconds here. And then after the 5000 milliseconds, it will come out of the um, non-default sessions. Okay. And then you will find another or two options here. So like from description, so where here, um, uh, from the tester present service defined in the uh, diagnostic description file, uh, select the one to be set. So if no tester present uh, services should be defined in the uh, diagnostic description file, uh, always uh, uh, set it as a default request here. Okay. And uh, manually define, again, um, you can also manually define um, the byte streams. For instance, uh, you can also instead of uh, um, instead of the defined uh, tester present uh, um, bytes, you can also define here directly. So, for instance, zero x three e. As you all know, three e is for the uh, tester present. So, here also you could uh, uh, add some series of uh, um, bytes. And then when you click on to the override manually, obviously all these uh, parameters will be taken into consideration and it will uh, use the manually defined byte streams. Okay, that is the purpose of manually defined. And then we'll go into the next session on timings. Here we have two different timings like P2 timing, timeout and uh, P2 extended. So what is meant by this P2 timeout is after sending the request, after sending the request to the ECU, the ECU must react within the time. Okay, so uh, if you send a request to the ECU, it has to respond to your request uh, in some certain milliseconds. So that is send either a positive or negative message. And so far as a tester expects a response for the request. So I will, when I mention it as 150 milliseconds, it means that I expect some sort of a response uh, for my request within 150 milliseconds. So that's my configured timing here. And that is what it's a P2 timeout. Uh, if I don't receive uh, beyond this uh, uh, timeout, uh, I mean beyond this uh, uh, time, then I will uh, set it as a timeout. And there is a P2 extended. What is P2 extended is, uh, as the name suggests, it can be beyond this time defined. For instance, there might be uh, cases where uh, you will send a request to your ECU. Okay. But you will get a negative response with an error code of uh, 78. 78, it means that the, the response is pending from the ECU. So again, uh, in this case, we cannot, uh, uh, we can still wait until we get a response from the uh, ECU. So maybe like it's a response pending means the ECU might be busy. Uh, so we, we can define some certain time limit uh, here in order to wait until we get a response. In, in the sense like if we get a uh, 78 negative response, it will wait for uh, 5 more seconds in order to receive it. Uh, and then if it doesn't uh, receive it, then it goes as a timeout again. Um, it didn't receive any response at all. So in that way, uh, you can utilize these options uh, for the request and response uh, purpose. And again, you will have a security access like seed and key uh, DLL. So if you are using a diagnostic services for which uh, whose uh, uh, execution um, um, executing the uh, control unit uh, is to be unlocked then you must specify a DLL here. Uh, it, it might go with an encrypted way like a seed key algorithm. So you can load it over here and then uh, you can make use of it. And then we go with the uh, additional description. It's a common, um, um, it's another option where uh, if you are using a diagnostic services for who's executing the uh, control unit is to be unlocked. Um, okay. Uh, in the additional descriptions, uh, like through this uh, add additional descriptions, um, you can add on top of your master descriptions also. Now, once if you have added everything and if you click on to the apply and if you click on to OK, then 
you will find all these three panels okay uh, one is the diagnostic console the second one is the fault memory and third one is the session control so these are the three tabs uh, as i said earlier details on uh, more details on this diagnostic console fault memory and uh, session control i will uh, touch upon it in the next coming video so hope you got some insight on the diagnostic linking in kenu so if you like this video please hit the like button and for more such videos please click on to the subscribe button so that you will be notified on the upcoming videos if you are interested please check on my youtube channel where you will find all my other videos on vector kenu thank you all see you in another video